It's war time. It's war time. Gather the troops, yeah. It's war time. The Most High is gonna have mercy on you, Black. If you return back to him, it's war time. We are gods on this earth. We are God's You are now tuned in to Wartime Radio Show. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Welcome to Wartime Radio. This is Officer Yuanathan. We're at WPJM 800. On my left, Officer Kalaya. And on my right, Officer Aton. Hey, we are the frontline soldiers for you today. Today's topic will be Christian sin that's in the church that's not in the Bible. So we're going to start off with first um, Jeremiah 23 and 1. Bring it out. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. The word woe means destruction. So start that off again from the top. Woe be unto the pastors. So destruction unto the pastors. That scatter, that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. A lot of our people are destroyed right now for the simple reason of things that they believe that's in the Bible that's not actually there. And we're going to get those some of those sayings, like, for example, nobody can keep all those laws. Nobody's perfect. We hear that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. Nobody can keep them laws, brother. Can't keep all them laws. Only my Jesus was ever <laughs> perfect. Right. Only my Jesus. That's what they say. Only my Jesus was perfect. But, hey, let's find out what Christ said out of his own mouth. Give me Matthew 5 and 48. Bring it out. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect. What? Be ye therefore perfect. Christ commanded us to be perfect. Now, are we going to tell Christ nobody can be perfect? Read. Even as your Father which is in heaven <clears throat> is perfect. So we're supposed to be like our Father in heaven. We're supposed to be emulating him to be perfect. That's it. <laughs> so what are, what, are, what are they talking about that nobody can be perfect? If I thought through all things, you know. You yeah, can, you can do all things through Christ. Right. But you, then when it says keep the commandments, I can't do that, though. Can't do that? Unbelievable. Can't do that. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's how they talk. Right. Because uh, you had actually had, we were talking about a script earlier. Shoot, we could actually, this goes right along with that perfect script. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. And. Uh, Verse 16. Yeah, 16. Yeah, that, that it tells you what the scriptures was meant to do. It's the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, and verse 16. Uh-huh. Bring it out. All scripture is... Not some scripture. Mm-hmm. That's what they say. They want to pick and choose what they want to follow and everything else. The reason why y'all believe you can't be perfect is because you don't know the whole... Y'all don't use the whole Bible. I thought you, it's just New Testament, though. No, no, no. This said all scripture. Mm. Read that again. Read it again. All scripture is given by inspiration of God uh-huh. and is profitable... For doctrine, read. for reproof, for, uh-huh. for correction. To correct us as a people, read on. For instruction in righteousness. It lets us know how to be righteous. So that what? Read on. That the man of God may be perfect. That hmm. the man of God may be perfect. Yet still all our people, they say they are the men and women of God, but yet and still they've never read that verse right there so that they may be perfect. Perfect. It's the whole reason the Bible was written. So the child of God got to be perfect. That's what the Bible says. Whoa. <laughs> Read on. Finish it up. That the man of God may be perfect, duly furnished unto all good works. Unto all good works, which is keeping the commandments. That's what makes us perfect. But brother, you telling me there's people in this Bible outside of Jesus that was perfect. Absolutely. Is that is that true? That is absolutely true. Can you give me an example? Uh, let's get, um, first of all, before we jump into that, we, let's jump into that. But you said you right here, you read that you may be thoroughly furnished, right? Mm-hmm. The thing that keeps us 
outside of, of, of thinking that we can be perfect is the fact that we don't know what makes us thoroughly furnished. And like we've always bringing out on the show that it's all about keeping the commandments of God. All sure. right. And, and that's the same thing Christ taught. It's the same thing that our forefathers did in uh, walking with uh, walking according to the instructions given in the scriptures. So uh, that's one thing we got to realize that these, these laws make us perfect. It's what brings us back to the perfection of God. Right. Woo! All praises, all praises. Matter of fact, uh, let's get uh, Psalm 16, uh, 17 and 9 right quick. 19 and 7. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. Bring it out. The law of the Lord is perfect. That's what makes us perfect, the laws of God. So when we say nobody can keep these laws, then you're not seeking perfection. Because those laws will make you perfect. Read. Converting the soul. What will these laws do? Converting the soul. They're going to convert you into that righteous individual. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Uh huh. Making wise the simple. It's going to make the simple wise. That's what the laws of God do. So when we say, hey, nobody can keep all these laws, it shows how simple you really are. Right. Mm -hmm. That is it's, a simple statement. That's a very simple statement because you would claim that you love God without keeping the laws, mm -hmm. without keeping the commandments. Mm -hmm. how, how is that possible? You, you, hey, if anybody didn't listen to you that you claim that, that loved you, you would say that's hatred. You don't love me. You got <laughs> hatred for me. So if you're going to say you can't keep God's laws, you're saying you got hatred for God. That's what you're really saying. You ain't saying that you love him, that you, you're trying to do all things through him. Right. And you're definitely not trying to be perfect. You're going to ignore that scripture where Christ told you to be perfect out of his own mouth. Exactly. That's a commandment Christ said. Be perfect even as his father in heaven is perfect. And there were men in the Bible that, you know what? They were perfect. Christ was not the only one perfect. Give me Genesis 6 and 9. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 9. Read it out. These are the generations of Noah. So we're speaking about Noah. Read. Noah was a just man. He was a just man. And perfect. And what? And perfect in his generations. Noah was a perfect man. No, it was a perfect man. That was a man that loved God. That was a man that kept the laws and commandments. That was a man that taught those commandments to his children. And his children, guess what? They raised their wives on these laws and commandments. That's why they were saved through the flood, because they was perfect. Is that the only person in the Bible? Is that the only example? Nah, but you see how you see how we in Genesis, but they tell you to read just the New Testament. So they would never read that Noah. Perfect. Right. Never. They will never come across it because okay. your pastors are telling you to just go by the New Testament. They're more like, like, read that in Genesis. No. They're like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> what book is that? <laughs> exactly what they're doing. That is, Who that does is. that? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they're doing. Shoot, you had a script, officer? Um, no, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, All right. Got? Well, because uh, I was asked for another one. Let's go to Job. Oh. They love Job. Yeah. You know, sometimes the pastors they like to quote Job or go there, and then they hurry up and jump back to the to the New Testament and and throw away everything that uh they just just came up on. So let's go to Job chapter one verse one, first first script in the whole book. This is the book of Job chapter one verse one. Uh -huh. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, uh -huh. and that man was perfect. That man was what? Was perfect. Dang. So he was perfect, read on. And upright. Uh huh. And one that feared God and eschewed evil. And he hated evil. So that man feared God's judgments. That's why he kept the commandments and he hated evil. Right. Job loved God. That's hey. what love is the keeping of the, uh, the commandments. Read. I'm like, my fault. I say something else. Yeah. The, the heavy part in there says that it eschewed evil, right? Because mm -hmm. to say that you can't be perfect means to say that you're the devil that the Bible speaks of and that you love to be evil mm -hmm. and wicked. Exactly. Right. Because right. God's laws tells you, marry a sister. Get married. Yep. Don't fornicate. Don't steal. Don't kill. Don't have abortion. Don't do these different things. By you saying that you want to keep doing that and not convert your soul and start walking in God's laws, mm -hmm. 
That means you want to be evil and wicked. Is that how people tell it? Nope. That's just the way it is. That's uh, you know, that's why they say they can't be perfect. That's why they get taught by all the pastors that scattered them all over the place. And they say, hey, if you keep the commandments, you've fallen out of the grace of God. Right. Can I give an example? Unbelievable. Yeah, um, King David. King David committed adultery. He committed murder, right? Right. Can I get 1 Kings 11 verse 4 real quick? Bring it out. Because our people like to use David as an example, right? Well, what, did, what did the Most High God say about King David's spirit? 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. Mm -hmm. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, mm -hmm. as was the heart of David his father. He said King David, his father's heart was perfect. But David mm -hmm. committed all those sins. Right. Christ is telling all of us to be perfect. Right. So what does that mean? Right, King David, Christ brought us grace. Isn't a couple more? Good, good. We get Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse nine, because growing up in this society, we have to understand the most high understands what we're coming out and what he's pulling us out of. The reason why he sent his son Christ down is for us to start practicing and rehearsing the laws that the most high gave to us and striving to perfect those things. Second Corinthians chapter twelve, because Christ says something heavy to Paul. I got it. I'll read it. 12 verse, um, start at verse 7. We're just going to read through it for time's sake. Verse All right. Seven. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. Bring it out. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations mm -hmm. that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So Paul is saying, unless I be deemed as God walking on this earth, the Most High gave him a thorn in the flesh. Every single one of us is given a thorn in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Satan is going to tempt us in this world here. The problem with our people is we think that we have to succumb to the evil and succumb to Satan. Read. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, mm -hmm. that it might be depart, that it might depart from me. Read. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Christ said, His grace is sufficient for us. Read. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. We can't even, we can't deal with the strength of Christ and the purpose of Christ if we're not, if, if we don't see our conversion. When we see that drug dealer no. turn into a man that's not selling drugs. When we see that whoremonger marry his woman and stop sleeping around with other women. When we see that sister come out of pants, dress modestly, wearing a dress and submitting to a husband. That is the power of Christ. Right. That is, that is Christ's strength right there. And we must start displaying that. That's what he's teaching Paul. And that's what David understood in regards to repentance. Last one. Let me get Psalms chapter oh, 50. You want me to finish, oh, finish that off. Finish yeah. it off. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. So we glory in our infirmities, meaning the struggles that we have fighting against the flesh, fighting against that sin that we want to do. But we know God tells us not to do. So we have to be perfect. We, so we striving to be perfect like our Father in heaven read. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. That the power of Christ can rest upon me. I used to be that gangbanger. Now look at me. Now look what Christ has done to my family. Look what Christ has done. That's what we need to be. You, you can say, I used to be that thought that committed 19 million abortions. Now look at that power. That's what Christ is talking about. Be therefore perfect. And why did he say David's heart was perfect? Last one, Psalms 51. Bring it That's why he said David's heart was perfect. Exactly. And but David committed all kinds of sins, right? Right. But this is what David understood. Verse 2. Verse um Psalms 51, verse, get straight to the point, verse um 12. All right. Oh, verse verse 11. Gotcha. Bring it out. Psalms chapter 51, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Cast me not away from thy presence, mm -hmm. and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. We know that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is the laws of God. Don't take that understanding. Don't take I, my, my, my work in this, this walk here, this truth and the keeping of your laws from me. Don't make me reprobate, Lord. Read. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation mm -hmm. and uphold me with thy free spirit. Read. Then will I teach, the tra teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. That's the power. When sinners see that ex-thought, ex that ex-whore, that ex-gangbanger, that ex-whoremonger changing, They'll see your ways. You're able to teach them your ways, and they will be converted unto you. You should want that. Read on. Deliver me from the blood guiltiness, uh -huh. O God. 
Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Right, and then you start praising the Most High's righteousness for delivering you from that dunghill, which is wickedness and sin. Right. So perfection, that's why he said David's heart was perfect. That's the perfection that that Christ is asking us to do now. Let's sit off. Hey, I'll praise it. Read verse 13 again. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, Psalm chapter 51, verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. How can they teach the transgressors thy ways if you don't know the laws? You got to know the laws. We have to study the laws of God so we can walk in perfection. Read. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. And sinners going to be converted. But how will the sinners know who's the righteous? Give me uh, Psalms 37 and 37. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Is it 37? Mm-hmm. The book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 37. Mark the perfect man. Do what? Mark the perfect man. How are you going to know he's perfect? Because you're going to see him keeping the laws. Right. You're going to be able to see that man because you know what? His light will be shining. What, and what is that light? The keeping of the commandments. Right. You're going to see that man keeping that commandments and you're going to know that goes the perfect man. Read. And behold the upright. Behold the what? The upright. Because why? He's walking in the righteousness of God. He's keeping the laws. Read. For the end of that man is peace. The end of that man is peace. And when you're keeping the laws and commandments, that's what it brings to your life. Peace. It brings you peace. Now you got to get read on down. Read. Read but the transgressors. So that means there's an opposite. There is an opposite of that perfect man. There is a opposite. The opposite is transgressors. So they go against the commandments. Of right. God, like what you're saying. Go ahead. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. Three. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. So that would mean if you're not striving to be perfect, this is your judgment. What we mm -hmm. just read. Wow. We don't read that. They don't show that in Christian church. So, hey, Christians, let's get rid of that saying. Let's get rid of that saying that nobody can be perfect and nobody can keep all these laws. And because here go another one that goes right along with it. God hates to sin, but loves to sin. What? <laughs> <laughs> right. We hear that all sense. the time. That don't make no sense. <laughs> so, so he loved. So he loved the person. Right. But he hated what they did, and that's it. That's it. That's that's, that's what they're saying. Because they say we all sinners. That's, I be trying to step right along to the left. Just in case God wanted to destroy them right then and there. In case a bus, in case a, a bus is coming. <laughs> the side step. Hey, you ever seen that? You, you ever seen that uh that, that that clip on on Facebook or YouTube where that tire just come rolling down the road? Oh, and a couple man. walking together. Dude, hey, that's judgment right there, boy. That, that, that tire missed all that other stuff. And hit him in the back. <laughs> Bow, back of the head. Judgment. Hey, let's go right into that. Cause I want I we hear that too much. That is a saying, and you cannot tell Christians that. God don't hate sinners. So let's go to Sirach 12 and 6. This is this. the book of book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 6. Bring it For the most high hateth sinners. He do what? Dang. The most high hateth sinners. I'm like, what the hell? Damn, what did right I just there. read? This is <laughs> I mean, really, we didn't even have to read it any further. <laughs> God <laughs> hates sinners. But how can that be? God don't hate. Unless you sinning, you breaking the law. It said sinners. Mm. The, the the people that are doing the sinning is what that is. Right. <laughs> Those that are breaking his laws. That's what a sinner is. So when you sit there and say, We all sinners, you are all lawbreakers. You are all disobedient children. And most high hates you. <laughs> Finish that up. It's the book of Sirach, chapter twelve, verse six. For the most high hateth sinners uh -huh. and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. So it's vengeance coming to the ungodly, to those that are breaking his laws. They want the vengeance of God. That's what they want. That's what they're saying when they say you can't keep all them laws. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. saying I want the, I want the Lord to to pay, repay me un, the, 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 his wrath for breaking the commandments. Yep. Yeah. Because you ain't trying to keep them, that just it just don't it just don't make sense. You're gonna do all anything you want to do. You're gonna do on earth, and then when you die, you get to explain to the to the Lord why you didn't keep the commandments when it's written right here. <laughs> right. Hey, finish that verse up. For the Most High hated sinners uh -huh. and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. Read and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. Their punishment. Can you imagine sitting there having a wait? 
on the punishment that's coming from God. I said, keep them the mighty dicks, go charcoal. Charcoal, mm-hmm. walking charcoal. You know, when you see that meteorite coming, you're going to know that's your day. You're going to know. And you're going to be like, but you know, the pastor told me we didn't have to keep them laws. We couldn't keep all of them. Hey, Bishop, y'all would stop calling them missile food. They <laughs> 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 feed the fire and make it bigger. Right. Hey, but you know what? Maybe they just, maybe our people saying, but that's in that book. That yeah, little red right. book. In the, the, we don't have that in your Bible. That's because you need to get the 1611 King James Version Bible. That's what we're reading. So that is the Bible that we that, that we actually are reading out of because it has the 14 missing uh, books in it that were taken out by the Protestant church. That's just so those of you that are listening will know that is the part of the Bible that we're reading from when we say Ecclesiasticus or Sirach. Hey, well, do we got any more verses that prove that God hates sinners? Surely. All day. All day. Let's All get day. Uh, Psalm 5 and 5. You tell me it ain't just one. No, nah, no. Nah, see, if, if you don't have that right there, <laughs> so we going to go. Everybody be walking around with uh, like a Deacon Asaph say, Psalms. So let's go to Psalms <laughs> chapter 5, verse 5. So let's see. Let's see if it's in what, what y'all have in your churches. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 5 and verse 5. Uh-huh. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Uh-huh. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou hatest who? All workers of iniquity. God hates the workers of iniquity. Those that work the sin, that perform the sin, it said God hates them. It didn't even say that he hated the sin right there. He said he hates the person. Right. Well, he hates sinners. <laughs> he hates sinners. In the book of Psalms. And our people are <laughs> proud to be sinners. Right. I don't hear them say, you know what? I'm a proud person that keep God's laws. They say, we all sinners, brother. We all sin. Are you perfect? Man. Yeah, I'm trying my best to be perfect. I'm trying my best to keep every single law that there is. Yes, right. And if That's I break one, I'm going to repent right. from repent. that. Yep. I'm going to turn away from that sin. I'm not going to live in it. You know, that's, and that's what our people do. They live in that sin. They won't change. Right. They stay the course, holding strong, holding fast. They ain't going to let go because they say they was born a sinner. They're going to die a sinner. And they're going to die charcoal. That's it. Straight charcoal. That's it. You can get um, Amos 9 and 10. Ooh. Dealing with those sinners. Because they think there's no judgment for living in sin. But like... The scripts say the Lord hated all sinners. He hated all mm-hmm. workers of iniquity. Mm-hmm. All right. The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 10. All sinners of my people shall die by the sword. It says all sinners of my people shall die by the sword. You sure that ain't a typo where they say a song? Read mm-hmm. it again. All sinners of my people shall die by the sword. So there's no exception. The most I didn't give anyone license to sin. Read on. Which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. God's not going to kill me for breaking his laws. Oh, he, look, the, the one that the women say, he ain't going to kill me for just wearing pants. Mm. And that's just simple. God ain't going to kill me for just wearing pants. You mean he going to mm. kill me for, for, for wearing clothes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he <laughs> is. what the Bible says. <laughs> yes. Pretty uh, sure. Uh, well, hold on, hold on. You telling me, when our sisters say, God ain't going to judge me for what I wear, that mm. they wrong? They are uh, one thousand percent wrong that's, that's what, right that's sister's always right you, know, always <laughs> you right. say they always right <laughs> they always right ain't they and they own understanding yes right, they are right they lean to their own understanding <laughs> that's it hmm. that's it so shoot hey well we can read it yeah, yeah. let's read that definitely not wasn't in it because you know what that's that hey our women get half naked and say that god ain't judging them you know really they don't realize that they are oppressors have given them the license to sin. Mm-hmm. God never gave them the license to sin. But the oppressors say, you know what? Do what you want to do. Here in America, you can do as you please. <laughs> in America. In America. In America. <laughs> you better shut your black Christian mouth. <laughs> Read that. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. Read it out. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes. And the king's children. So it said in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. So when Christ returned, because that was the Lord's sacrifice. So then it says that he will punish 
it don't mean hugs and kisses. Don't nobody, when you hear the word punishment, think of hugs and kisses. No, they go into their room. You know what I mean? That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Did they think he going to put them in time out? Mm-hmm. No. When Christ come back, he's coming with fire. He's going to kill a bunch of people. And this particular people that we're reading about, let's see what they was doing. Read that. Finish and it. Up. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice uh-huh. that I will punish the princes and the king's children. So the princes and the king's children. Uh huh. And all. And all. That means everybody. And all. Read. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. That ain't wearing what God said. You know what's you know what's funny, and we always bring it out of camp. You ask a sister or a brother, you ask a brother or a sister. I'm a specifically a sister. If you gotta go use the restroom, what restroom do you decide to go into once you enter the building? <laughs> and they say the women's restroom, and you say, well, well, how do you know that's the woman's restroom? Because it got a, it got a dress on it. How is it that you can figure that out? You can figure out which restroom to go in, but mm-hmm. you don't know what a woman. It's supposed to wear, Bruh. and they and they act like they don't know what you're talking about either. Right. Mm. When you ask them that, you that's why we have to ask them that question about hey. the signs or the bad. Thing. And you know what? You know what it is. I just figured it out. They're gonna explain it to God <laughs> <laughs> when they see. <laughs> they gonna give him a deep parable. <laughs> hey, give me First Timothy two and nine, because like I said, they think they can dress any way they want to. They got that freedom here in America. America has made the black woman be a straight center. That made her hate herself, hate how she look, hate the rawness that's in her. And hate her black man. Hey, oh, God. Mm. She hates the black man. <laughs> she hates the black man right along with the right along with our enemies. Dang. Our enemies have nothing but hatred for us. And they go to the black woman right there beside them. Got them on speed dial. 911. <laughs> Nine one one. I have a problem with the black male, and guess what? They'll come running to do what? To help the black woman every single time, and they ain't giving you. They don't want to hear what you got to say. No, unless that black woman disrespect them, then both of y'all got to go. <laughs> <laughs> both of y'all got to go. Hey, go ahead and read that. It's the book of First Timothy, chapter two, verse nine. Read it out. In like manner also, uh-huh. that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Is modest apparel? Anybody got a definition of modest? Because mm-hmm. our people act like they don't have a clue what modest means. They think that skin tight dress on, like Beyonce, is modest. I got a dress on, brother, but it doesn't even give you a room to breathe. That's how tight it is. You can barely walk. Some of these dresses are so tight, so short. If they sit down, they almost butt naked just from sitting down. You got it? I got it. Um, this is this is the Webster uh, Webster's definition of modest. It says placing a moderate et- or estimate on one's abilities or worth. Now, that ain't the one I want. Uh, what you got? No, I got modesty. Modesty. So modesty. Yeah. Modesty, so that's what that's uh, that's pretty much what where the word modesty comes from. Modest, dressed in modest. All right, so you got the third the third definition that says behavior, manner, or appearance intended to avoid improper in, improper type <laughs> impropriety and indecency or indecency. Right, and I'm gonna tell you, our people are indecent. On world star hip hop, it's almost a shame to look at what our people are doing out in the streets. You know, what you got? Got one more. It says, um, dressing or behaving so as to avoid for. impropriety or indecency, especially to avoid attracting sexual attention. That's, that's the, one, that's I the one I was looking for. Typically right. use of a woman. Wow. To avoid attracting what? Sexual attention. That's why the Most High said, read that again. That's why the Most High brought this out. The book of First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. Read it out. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So you don't attract sexual attention. So you don't be looked at as a piece of meat. Our women, you are royalty. And guess what? Dress modest. 
You look know, like you roll. You know what they say? But who wants that? Mm, right. <laughs> the men right. want that. Right. Who wise to do that. But, but who wants that? <laughs> look, the righteous men want that. Yeah, the righteous men want that. Because you know what? They That's our wives. Hey. That's our daughters. Right. Hey, Sister Mary, that means you cannot wear that tight dress to church next week. <laughs> All right? That's that 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 foam fitting uh dress that you like to wear and walk slowly up the aisle to the front seat in front of Deacon. <laughs> Don't wear that next week. <laughs> hey, finish out that verse. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel uh -huh. with shamefacedness. With what? With shamefacedness. All right, please bring back shamefacedness. Please bring back, you know what, That get rid of that proud look. Get rid of that masculine look that nobody can tell you nothing. Act like you got some shamefacedness about yourself, black woman. We love you. We want to see you come back to being a princess. We're tired of seeing you walking up and down the street looking like a whore. Read. And sobriety. Uh-huh. Not with broided hair mm -hmm. or gold or pearls or costly array. Mm -hmm. Read. But which becometh women professing godliness. That's what we want to see you. We want to see you professing godliness. Read. With good works. With what? With good works. Works. That's what we want to see. We want to see you dressing modestly. We want to see you professing good works. We want to see you keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Hey, you know, I know um, that first half, I know some spirits out there right now saying, look at these brothers judging. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no way you're supposed to judge. Only God can judge me. Mm. Hey, mm. let's see if that's in the book of Tupac, chapter one, verse one. Can you pull that? Um, <laughs> It, Wait, it, it, it ain't in there. Maybe that's no. one of the. Maybe, so maybe we got the let wrong me, book. Let me go to my table of contents. They got that in this book. <laughs> I what know it's it's a book of Tupac, chapter what, one, verse one. What? Only God can Look, judge me. What Bible they use, bro? Right. What are you talking about, man? What what Bible they got? Hey, let's get First Corinthians two and fifteen because our people think that we can't judge. Only God can judge. So we are gonna have to find out if that's true. If this is another saying. That's uh, true in the Bible, or did somehow our people invent and make this up? They invented it. <laughs> All day, every day. All day, every day. <laughs> Go ahead and read. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 15. Uh -huh. But he that is spiritual. He that is what? Spiritual. Uh -huh. Judgeth all things. Whoa. He that is spiritual judges all things. Well, what's spiritual? Let's forget that right quick. Give me that in Romans, chapter 7, verse 14. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 14. Bring it out. For ye know that the law is spiritual. So the law is spiritual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. somebody that keeps the law is spiritual. So, they, so when people walk around saying, I'm a spiritual person. Right. If you don't keep God's laws, you lying. They lying. I thought they living by the spirit. One of the captains said best, somebody lying on the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go back to that. I like that. Somebody's lying on the Bible. And I hear it every single day. They lying on the Bible saying only God can judge me. Read. <laughs> it's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15. Uh-huh. Read it out. But he that is spiritual. He that keeps the laws. Judgeth all things. We have to judge if you're walking in righteousness. Now, how are we going to tell you to not sin if we don't know the laws? How are we going to help our people achieve the kingdom if we don't tell them the laws? How are you going to raise your children if you don't know the laws of God? Right. They're not raising them kids in the laws. That's why our society is so out of control right now. Exactly. <laughs> That's what's going on. We're a lawless society that don't judge our people. They say we can't judge, but got a whole book called Judges. judges. The whole book of Judges. Huh? And well, you know what? And they was correcting the people. What it is is they don't want us to judge us. You know what I'm saying? Because they go in front of the white man every single day in court and get judged mm -hmm. and have no problem dealing with the uh, judgment that comes down from the enemy. Mm -hmm. They have no problem no. serving that enemy in judgment. But yet they got a problem with God's laws. They're supposed to love God. They're supposed to love Christ. But they don't want the spiritual man to help them out. When they in sin, you don't want you as a spiritual man to help them. Because <laughs> you look like them. Because mm -hmm. I look like them. Wow. Hey, let's pull some more verses because I know there's more than one. The thing about the Bible hey, is monotonous. It's going to keep saying the same thing over and over. Hey, let's get, let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus 19. 
mm-hmm. verse 15. Because like we've been hammering, hammering on wartime radio for the longest that you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven without doing the commandments as is written in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Blessed is he that do the commandments that, he have, that they right. may have right to the tree of life. So the commandments are found where? They're found in the beginning of the Bible. Right. They're found in the book from Genesis up to Revelation. You're going to find the law, statutes, and commandments uh, being pushed by the prophets. So let's read that all the way back in Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 15. It's the book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. You shall do what? No unrighteousness in judgment. Why would Mosai tell us that? You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. That means if I can't do no unrighteousness in judgment, that obviously that means that I'm judging. Right. <laughs> if I can't be unrighteous in my judgment, that means I'm judging you. It's just it's just it's just common sense. It says you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Read on. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. So in righteousness, meaning if I see you shaving off your beard as a as an Israelite man, knowing that the law says that the Israelite man should not shave his beard, and I say, brother, don't shave your beard. Brother, you mean you to tell me, me. I, that, that what's wrong with that? <laughs> if I said, brother, put that gun down, stop killing your own people. You mean to tell me stop being a snitch? <laughs> in, in other words, wow. like, what That's is wrong with us? Dang. We judge all day. You walk out, you make a judgment every time you take a if, every time you walk outside, every time you leave home, every time you walk in the grocery store, you're judging. Right. We have to come out of this out of this mindset of of uh, not be, not being able to judge. You want you should you should want your brothers and your sisters to judge you and to correct you on the things before the Most High God do it Himself. I think right. they get it confused with judgment. Right. right. Hey, jump down to verse seventeen. Mm-hmm. Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse seventeen: Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Why did the Most High say you shouldn't hate your brother in thy heart? Because if you're not judging him, that means you hate him. You, that means you hate him exactly. Right? Is that simple? Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. You mean I'm supposed to correct him? You're supposed to judge him. Right here. <laughs> Say, what is he called again? I was a Goliath. What is he called? Judge him. <laughs> judge him. Right. <laughs> hey, our people don't want correction. Because we know what they say. You can't tell me what to do. You ain't my daddy. My God. Hey, you think about that right there. Our children are taught that at an early age. Mm-hmm. So a grown person to tell them something to correct them, judging them, and that little child will look at that grown person and say, you ain't my daddy, you ain't my mama. Mm-hmm. They'll tell the teachers that. You ain't my mama, you ain't my daddy, you can tell me what to do. But yet we're supposed to be what? Loving our neighbor. I, ain't I had to make a sister go sit her child in the car at the, at, on the job the other day. You know, I'm a personal trainer. She brought her child in, try to work with her. You know, told the child, look, all right, you 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 can bring it, you can bring your daughter in if she just just act like you're exercising a little bit. You know what that little girl told me? I ain't gonna do that. I said, you gonna go sit in the car then? You ain't gonna come in here? Right. She looking at me like, yes. Take your daughter to the car, crack the window, whatever you need to do. She can't come up in here. <laughs> she well, was you, mad in the mug you, working out with you, you bro. Gonna, you ain't gonna tell me. You little girl ain't gonna tell me what to do. <laughs> hey, you know what? This right here today is one of the Greatest forms of love because we're showing our people how to love one another. Read that again, verse 17. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Uh Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and and not suffer sin upon him. So if we sitting here giving the solution, the solution, yeah. to why we in these conditions. If we're giving them the answers, telling them this is sin, you're right here, this is what you're doing wrong. This is what you're doing wrong. We're showing our people love. Coming Wartime Radio is a show about loving our people, trying to keep them from death. Right. Combating the the the, the lies, fighting the war that's in your mind that has been planted within us since the time we were birthed into existence in America. It's dangerous. It's a war. This 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 war is mental. Right. You got something else? Um, the thing is, 
how people like to use scriptures to back why they say that. Uh, Matthew 7, verse yes, 1. Man, that's where I was right. going, but you got it. Oh, you that's got it. Good. I'm going to explain good. that to you. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Should be using the Spirit. All praise it. So, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Mm-hmm. Judge not that ye be not judged. Right, pastor, mm-hmm. close the Bible. That's it. Yep. You can't right <laughs> that's it. They be, they be like this. Well, judge, judge not. not. You can't judge me. And then they throw the Tupac verse right there at that spot. That's that emphasizing. Only <laughs> judge God not can judge me. That you be not judged. <laughs> Only God can judge me. Let, me. let me show you what that means, though. Get Luke chapter 6 now. It's going to say the same thing, but it's going to expound a little bit more on that thing. What judgment is Christ talking about? Luke chapter 37. 6, verse 37. Yep. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Mm-hmm. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Right, so saying the same thing, but read on. Condemn not. We are not to condemn our brothers. We can't put no one to death. Right. We can't. Give you the electric chair. Right. We can't do none of those <laughs> things. All we can do is show you love by warning you and telling you, look, God hates the sin that you're in. You need to repent. Mm-hmm. Change your ways, brother or sister. Read. And ye shall not be condemned. Go ahead. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. So, so when we go out and we teach our people, even when we're getting corrected, we know that it's love. And we must forgive our brothers and sisters when they turn from the turn from their wicked ways. But here's what you should fear. Get on Second Andrew chapter 15, 16, verse 67. It says only God can judge you, right? Right. Second Andrew 15, what? Second Andrew 16, verse 16, 67. 16 and 67. This is what you should fear. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 67. Mm-hmm. Behold. God himself is the judge. This is God himself is the judge. So we're warning you, showing you love. Because Showing you love because we don't want you to fall into the hands of the living God. Right. It's a fearful that's thing right. to fall into the hands of the living God. We're right. warned. That's love. Read. Fear him. Fear God. Fear his judgment. Read. Leave off from your sins. Go ahead. And forget your iniquities. Read. And to meddle no more with them forever. Forever. That's the warning that the prophets, the brothers, even some sisters go out. Hey, sis, you need to stop wearing a skirt, be modest, and things like that. That's what we do when we're correcting our brothers and sisters. Read. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. If you don't want to meet God's judgment, you would understand that we are showing you love by telling you, sis, stop wearing pants, dress modest, brother. Take care of your family because you don't want to fall into the hands of the living God. It says God himself is the judge. Right. He's going to condemn you. Right. Hey, since since we're in this book of Apocrypha, let's get Sirach 10 and 1. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 10 and verse 1. Here we go. A wise judge will instruct his people. (laughs) A what? A wise judge will instruct his people. So a wise judge would instruct his people. <laughs> Not hold his peace. Right. Instruct his people. A wise judge. A wise judge. Oh, I had, I, had to, I had to say it a couple of times so, yeah. so I could understand that he was he's a judge. <laughs> right. A he's a judge. judge. He's a judge. And what makes him wise? <laughs> the keeping of the commandments. Exactly. Read. Exactly. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Mm-hmm. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. Read. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. Mm-hmm. So guess what? When we don't have wise judges, you know what we have? Ghettos. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Violence. Exactly. Bloodshed. And this this is what, this, this, I, it just don't make, for the life of me, it just don't make sense. I mean, even in the world, you know that there has to be somebody that has to tell you how to grow up, how to do things. That's judging you. Right. Yep. Judge, judge, that's judging the way that you're moving and living in life. Let me, let me pull a script. Let me get Ezekiel real quick. Bring it out. Ezekiel 3, 17, and I want you to jump to verse 20. Because wartime radio, like Officer Yuan Thought is brought out, is, a, it, it is about the redemption of our people. It's about saving our people and showing you how we're in error and how to come out of that thing. Read what you got. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. These watchmen are judges. They're looking out for the, the, the way that Israel is moving. These are judges. Come on. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth uh-huh. and give them warning from me. So the judges are to be giving the people warning 
of the Most High God, like the brother just, like officer just brought out, you you rather fall into the hands of man than to fall into the hands of God. Right. You rather it be man telling you to fix yourself and to get yourself together according to God's commandments, rather than God, because He ain't doing no talking. It's gonna be death. Now jump over to verse twenty, the Book of Ezekiel, chapter three, verse twenty. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die Come on. because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he had done, shall not be remembered. That's heavy right there. That mm -hmm. means that you can do all these works on the earth in righteousness and then fall into sin. Most of I say, I ain't going to remember none of that right there. Mm -hmm. Not going right. to remember none of that. But read on. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Come on. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. So the whole, the whole point is, we're not only just trying to deliver our own souls, we're trying to keep the commandments. Right. You see that? Right. We're trying to keep the commandments. But if you claim that you're righteous, you, first of all, you're not righteous if you're not keeping the commandments. But if you're claiming to be righteous, if you think you're walking in righteousness, how are you going to say, can't nobody judge you? And that's the yeah. and like you and like what you're bringing out is so heavy because that's the job of the pastors exactly. is to right. warn. So when you don't warn and they die, now they the people's blood is on your hands. Exactly right. Exactly. Woo! So if you're listening to Wartime Radio, our hands are washed from your field. Exactly <laughs> because we are giving you warning. <laughs> giving them warning. <laughs> oh, praise. Hey, uh, give me Hosea four and one. I knew you was gonna pull it. I knew you could. I knew you couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. <laughs> hey, we got to see the results of no judgment. Mm -hmm. This is the results of not judging. This is our people not wanting. Look, we all sat back and waited for you, you to pull gonna, this script. You was gonna pull it. <laughs> all praises. They prophets, y'all. They prophets. They prophesy. I'm gonna read it with power for you. All. <laughs> the Book of Hosea, chapter four, verse one. Bring, Bring it out. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Uh-huh. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native <laughs> Americans, you are the children of Israel. Right. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Uh-huh. Because there is no truth. There's no law. Nor mercy. You don't have mercy for one another. Nor knowledge of God in the land. But they say they know God. Right. But they don't judge. They don't yeah. judge. <laughs> that don't make sense. Right. They don't correct you from your sin. That's they don't know the God of this Bible. Right. The God of this Bible has judgment for not keeping his laws. Right. Look what happens when you don't keep the laws of God, when you don't know the knowledge of God. Read. By swearing. Uh-huh. And lying. That's us. And killing. That's us. And stealing. And that's us. And committing adultery. That's, that's us. They break out. And blood toucheth blood. That's what you got. Hey, if this was a uh if, if this was a uh a, 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 a commercial. When you was reading, when you reading verse two, and these definitions are coming out, these statements are coming out, a, a picture of a Negro will pop up on the side of it right there. Yeah, every, <laughs> right. Time, every time you're going to be a, a picture of a Negro pop up. All right. Can I get one script? No, bring it out. Give me your revelations one and three real quick, because they're saying, well, somebody's saying right now, where they finding all these scriptures at? Go to your uh, living room, reach on the shelf, probably around some old glasses or whatever, and blow the dust off of that Bible. <sighs> You better shut your black Christian mouth. It's right there in your it's right there in your Bible. But you don't know it because this you're not doing this. Read uh, Revelations 1 and 3, I believe. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that what? That readeth. So why do the Christian church members always I'm blessed and highly favored? Oh. How are you blessed? Read that again. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. Readeth what? Readeth these scriptures. Come on, read that. And they that hear the words of this prophecy uh -huh. and keep those things that which are written therein. This is what this is what you have to do. This is how you're going to be blessed. All them little sayings y'all got in the church that you know you can't find in the Bible. Come out of that thing, man. You got to right. come out of that thing. Right. Hey, blessed is he that readeth and doeth the things that are written Therefore, why? Give me uh, Revelation 22 and 14. This is the whole mission of the Bible, is to get us to the kingdom. So let's find out who's going to get in this kingdom. 
the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So blessed are they that do the commandments, those same laws that you think nobody can keep. He said, blessed are they that do the commandments. I'm going to tell you, it's just like being, hey, if you go to a job, you work 40 hours, at the end of the week, you're blessed. Yep. They bless you with that paycheck, and you happy. Hey, you spend a lifetime on this earth, and you go to church, and you sit there and listen to that pastor, and you learn them songs, and you sang every one of them, and you didn't keep these laws and commandments, you don't get that blessing at the end of the day. You've been singing for nothing. You've been singing for All nothing. Vain. You've been Vanity. praising black Christian mouth. You've been praising God for nothing because mm -hmm. why? You didn't do the essential thing what he asked, which was keep the commandments. Read from top again. Book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, uh -huh. that they may have right to the tree of life. And what? And may enter in through the gates into the city. Come on home. Hey, come on home. You just said something. I know we, we, just read this this right, we ran out of time, but you just said something about them songs. I got to read this. Give me Amos chapter 5, verse 23 real quick. <laughs> I got to read this. You just said something about them songs. Because it's it, it's all boiling back down to what? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Read your Bible. Learn to keep the commandments. And stop singing them old crazy songs up in there. Clap your hands, stuff your feet. And it, it ain't getting no ministry on how to keep these commandments to get into the kingdom of heaven. Read that real quick. Amos chapter 5 and verse 23. Book of Amos, chapter five, verse twenty-three. Come on, take thou away from take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. God said he don't want to hear that mess. Hmm. He so don't want to hear that mess. No, come to Sundays. No, he don't want that. He don't want to hear that. But, morning. but read on. <laughs> but read on. For I will not hear the melody of thy bile. God don't want to hear that. He you you singing your songs are falling on deaf ears. Now read verse twenty-four. But let judgment. Let what? Let judgment. Hold on, wait a minute now. What 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 is this judgment thing we reading again? But let what? But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness and as, what? And righteousness. Come on. As a mighty stream. You must be getting judged. We must judge you and tell you, woman, stop wearing pants. Brother, stop wearing dresses. Pastor, stop lying to the flock. You must come out of this mindset and come back to keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments. That's, That's right. what you got to do. Hey, jump That's up to verse right. fifteen. Ooh, ooh. See, I was gonna hold back, but I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm like, bitch, <laughs> like, bitch. I was gonna hold that, but go ahead. <laughs> the Book of Amos, chapter five, verse fifteen. Hate the evil. Do what? Hate the evil. I hate when you breaking God's law, statutes, and commandments. I hate when you breaking His Sabbath. We hate, I hate when you breaking His dietary laws. <laughs> we hate to see our people in sin. Right. right. Read. And love the good. And do what? Love the good. I love to see when you're keeping God's commandments. Right. I love to see when you're loving your brother and your sister. I love to see when you're teaching the truth and being the example for our people. Right. Read. And establish judgment Ooh. in the gate. Do what? Establish judgment in the gate. Ooh. Establish judgment in your homes, in your neighborhoods, in your communities. You, When you do that, guess what? You're going to uplift your people. You're going to raise them up. Read. And establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Hey, all praises. We want the most high to be gracious with us. And with that being said, this is Wartime Radio. You've been with Officer Kalaya. Officer Aton. Yeah. And our reader. Officer, you want to thank us up. Hey, we are your frontline soldiers. Hey, come back next week. We got another exciting episode for you. Shalom. 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 Thank you for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. Follow us on all social media platforms at IUIC Columbia, South Carolina. Join our congregation every Saturday at 4 p.m. Located at 1823 Greg Street, Columbia, South Carolina. For more information, call us at 803-708-4861. At extension 237, share our show with your friends and family. And thank you again for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show.
We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.